a 2,000 pound dragster, 17 gallons of rocket fuel, 8,000 horsepower. A top fuel dragster accelerates faster than any other ground vehicle on Earth. It generates 5 Gs and hits 300 miles per hour in the time it takes a conventional car to go from 0 to 30. How do these amazing machines convert all that power into blistering speed? Great side-by-side -side run. We're going to show you on this episode of Popular Mechanics how they do that. Hi, my name's Dave Grubnick and I drive the Optima Batteries Top Fuel Dragster for Coletta Motorsports and I'm going to give you a detailed tour around this bad boy. So let's take a look and see what makes it tick. Historic Raceway Park in Old Bridge Township, New Jersey was the host for this year's NHRA's Super Nationals. The most exciting part of, of NHRA professional drag racing is that these race cars is the noise you can feel them. When they go down the racetrack, you really feel them. These things shake the ground. It's like a little mini earthquake. In the Team Coletta pit, the crew is prepping the dragster for its initial qualifying run. I've been drag racing all my life and I've been an assistant crew chief on this car for about six years now. This dragster is uh, made from chromoly tubing and a lot of carbon fiber parts, filled with aluminum. It makes about 8,000 horsepower. It's 500 cubic inches and it can accelerate from zero to 120 miles an hour in less than one second. What got me hooked on this sport and these race cars was a race in Australia when I was 13 years old. From that moment on, I got goosebumps and I knew that's exactly what I wanted to do. There you go. David Grubnick, 382-0. Now let's analyze the run second by second. In only half a second, the cars have blasted to 74 miles per hour, traveling only a little over 21 feet. Now at one second, they're already up to 113 miles per hour and 75 feet from the start. The ignition advance is retarded from 56 degrees to 27 degrees, a strategy to keep the tires gripping the track. At a second and a half, we're at 162 miles per hour and 125 feet. By this point, the clutch's throwout bearing has moved through three of five of its stages, increasing the pressure on the discs. Two seconds in, we're traveling 231 feet and are now approaching 213 miles per hour. The fuel flow ramps to 95 gallons per minute. At two and a half seconds, we've traveled 420 feet and are at 248 miles per hour. Some of the clutch plates begin welding together, pulling the engine to 6800, its lowest RPM of the run. Now only three seconds into the race, our car has traveled 650 feet and is now going 275 miles per hour. Thanks to 5,000 pounds of aero downforce, the tires have incredible traction, but wind resistance slows acceleration to about 4 Gs. Three and a half seconds in, we're at 783 feet and traveling at 293 miles per hour. Many of the spark plugs have now burned away, so the engine is dieseling and some cylinders simply don't fire. Now at 1,000 feet, the winner crosses the finish line going 315 miles per hour. The chute is then deployed, slowing the vehicle down rapidly without causing excess wear on the carbon fiber brakes. Let's watch that again at normal speed. Now, let's see how some of the main systems in the Dragster work together to create this awesome power. This engine is a V8. It's based off a Chrysler Hemi. Now, the engine block is made from a chunk of billet aluminum. Picture getting a square block of aluminum, putting it inside a CNC machine, and start boring it out, drilling it out. Same applies to the cylinder head. The cylinder head, again, based off the Chrysler Hemi, it's a two-valve hemispherical combustion chamber. Now, to ignite that whole mixture, we use magnetos. The nitromethane, we put 1.2, 1.3 gallons a second through this engine. We want to ensure that we fire that off. So we use two spark plugs, two magnetos. These magnetos here generate approximately 44 amps of primary current. If you want to do, you could do a little bit of arc welding with these things, so they're very, very stout.
So, what's a supercharger? Well, your average day passenger car breathes air, just like we do. And it breathes air at what we call atmospheric pressure. So as the internal components of the engines, the pistons go up and down. As the piston goes down, the intake valve will open and atmospheric pressure will push the air fuel mixture into the cylinder. Well, what we do is we force that into the engine under pressure. And that's what this supercharger does. That's what Mikey's working on right now, getting it ready for race day. The supercharger takes a gulp of air and forces it into the intake manifold. And we have a reserve, enough of a reserve, that we'll actually build approximately 50 PSI of manifold pressure. So think of 50 pounds of pressure sitting in behind that intake valve, and every time it opens, it's forcing that much air into the cylinder. And that's what this little bad boy does. And when it does that, and we open up these butterflies, believe me, it's a lot of horsepower. It's time for the first qualifying race, and Team Kalita is making their final preparations. The dragster is towed to the staging lane for its first run. Driving this race car is, it's all about focus points. There's so much intensity that happens to drive this thing, you really don't pay too much attention to anything else other than what you're doing at that specific time. So there's no point in worrying about keeping it in the groove until you've done the burnout correctly and backed the car up. There is no margin for error in these things. Driving one of these cars is being like an NFL kicker. And there's like two seconds left in the game and you need to kick it to win the game. If we make a mistake, we're done. Solid performance. Once we've completed with the run, the adrenaline shifts from the driver to the crew. Whether Tuttle opposite of NASCAR or any other motorsports where they spend most of their time on the track, we're on the track for a short period of time and in the pits for a long time. The car comes back here to the pit area, gets put up on jack stands, and uh, you'll basically see five guys taking the engine apart, taking the transmission out, taking the clutch in and out of the car. Um, it's all part of the refurbish process that happens every run. We have spares for everything. Um, you figure there's eight runs that you can maximize at a race. There's eight engines and eight sets of heads in this trailer at all times. During the run, the, there's some parts that are consumed. Um, pistons, connecting rods, rings, spark plugs. Uh, everything gets refurbished after every time the car runs. What we use is nitromethane. Now gasoline itself actually carries more energy in it per gallon. Now the reason we can make so much more power is because we burn so much of it. Underneath here is an aluminum fuel tank, which is approximately this long, and it fits inside the frame rails. Holds approximately 17 gallons. It comes back through a fuel line down here, which is two and a half inches in diameter. We have a fuel pump here, and the fuel pump on these cars is rated at 100 gallons per minute. This engine will consume over 1.3 gallons a second as it's going down the quarter mile. It's a lot of fuel, and in turn, a lot of power. The clutch itself is important because it's the buffer between the engine and the tires on the racetrack. The biggest difference is between this and a passenger car. In a passenger car, you have a transmission and the clutch only operates one disc. In these cars, there's six discs and multiple levers to provide what the transmission would do in your passenger car. There is no transmission in these cars. It would be like putting your car in whatever the highest gear is you have and letting off of the clutch. So let's look at these components. This is the clutch disc. This is a solid disc, it's sintered iron. We separate those clutches with this steel floater. This floater will run on top of that and we'll just stack them up, stack them up, and stack them up. Then the, our input shaft will go and it'll be splined through there. And then that transmits all the power through to the rear end. So it's a direct drive system, no gear shifting. So how do we clamp this whole package together? We use this. What this is, it's a centrifugal clutch. These levers will all come out, and what they do then is they'll push onto a donut, 
through the backside of this lever and they'll clamp this whole package together. These levers are all at individual heights. It allows these levers then to apply pressure to the pressure plate and in turn lock the clutch up. Very intricate part, very critical part of what accelerates these cars. It's something that the crew chiefs really have to master. So how do we accelerate a 2,000 pound car to 5 Gs? Well, we do it with these tyres. These tyres are absolutely amazing. The sidewall here is no more than approximately 150,000 thick. That's not very wide. The reason it is that way is it's a wrinkle wall slick. When this tyre sits up there on the start line and I step on the gas, this tyre will stick itself down to the racetrack. What that's doing is essentially increasing the footprint. So statically, it's this big. But once I step on the gas, it rolls itself out. That's how we can accelerate it so fast. Once it goes through that part, it has to what we call get up on the tire. It transitions. The centrifugal force of rotation will make this tire gross. They'll go from being this wide at the start line to being about this wide at the finish line. And that's like shifting gears. variables, how do we come up with a setup for this car? Well, one of the key factors is the racetrack temperature. So if the racetrack temperature is above 110 or 120 degrees, it becomes what we call very slippery. So we can't get aggressive with the car. The racetrack temperature is below 90 degrees, then it becomes very good and we can get aggressive. The ultimate final setup is not put in this race car until we're up, up in the staging lanes. Honey Coletta, our turner and owner, he will go up and watch the cars in front of us. And he will have preset scenarios in ignition maps, clutch management, that sort of stuff. The ultimate setup does not go in this race car until it's probably two or three runs away from sometimes the next pair down the racetrack. It's a last minute stuff and we have to. That's how critical some of these conditions are. In one 10-month season, the Coletta crew will race over 180 times, covering 34 miles of racetrack in 11 minutes. This is the ultimate test of any machinery, systems, and crew that help support it. We've just seen how a combination of integrated systems, expert crew, and precision driving work together to catapult these dragsters beyond 300 miles per hour in less than four seconds. And for those that haven't been, I encourage you to come to an event and feel and experience the raw power that comes out of these cars. I've been in it my whole life and I'm an addict. <laughs> There's really only one favorite moment and that's obviously winning. And that's how it's done.